Today I will tell you something truly shocking. Jessica's extraordinary journey to the afterlife, where she met her deceased father and spoke with God. But what makes this story unique are the three terrifying prophecies about the future of humanity that were revealed to her. Stay with me to discover what awaits us and how we can change our destiny. Enjoy listening. It was a morning like any other. I was late for work as usual. The traffic was unbearable, and my mind was already on the million things to do once I got to the office. My gray Toyota was moving jerkily in the continuous flow of cars as I desperately tried to avoid being late again. Suddenly, everything happened in an instant. I remember hearing the screeching sound of tires, followed by a violent impact. A black SUV, apparently out of control, had collided head-on with my car. The world around me turned upside down as my car was pushed sideways, ending up against the guardrail. The windshield glass shattered into a thousand fragments, and the sound of twisted metal filled the air. My body was violently thrown forward, and then everything went dark. I don't know how long I remained there, in that state of unconsciousness. When I began to regain consciousness, I felt as if I were floating in a dense and silent darkness. Then gradually a light began to filter through, a warm and enveloping glow that drew me towards it. I felt strangely light, free of pain or fear. It felt like floating in an ocean of infinite peace. As I approached the light, I began to see blurry images taking shape. My vision cleared, and I found myself in a place I had never seen but somehow felt familiar. I was in a lush green meadow with flowers of every color gently swaying in the wind. The air was filled with a sweet and enveloping fragrance, a mix of lavender, jasmine, and something indefinable but comforting. It was then that I saw him. My father, who had been dead for five years, stood there smiling as he always had. Tears began to flow down my cheeks as I approached him. He welcomed me with a warm and reassuring hug, and at that moment I felt all the worries and pains of my earthly life dissolve. My dear, said my father, it's good to see you again, even though I know you're confused and scared. Don't be afraid, I'm here to guide you. He took my hand and we began to walk together. Each step seemed to take me further away from the world I knew and closer to something extraordinary. We walked through an enchanted forest where the trees seemed to whisper ancient wisdom and the animals watched us with intelligent and knowing eyes. At the end of the forest, we arrived at a clearing illuminated by a golden light. In the center of the clearing, sitting on a throne of light, was an entity that emanated a divine presence. There was no doubt I was standing before God. I instinctively knelt, feeling a mix of reverential awe and overwhelming love. God spoke with a voice that resonated like a thousand harmonious bells. My child, you are here to receive a vision of humanity's future. Three prophecies will be revealed to you, and you will carry this knowledge with you, regardless of the fate of your earthly body. The first prophecy manifested before my eyes as a vivid vision. It seemed to be the year 2100. I saw modern cities turned into ruins with collapsed skyscrapers and deserted streets. The wild nature was reclaiming control, with trees and plants growing among the remnants of human civilization. A sense of desolation and loss permeated the air, as a few human figures wandered aimlessly, trying to survive in a world they no longer recognized. The second prophecy showed a great climate change. I saw arid lands become lush and full of life, while other once fertile regions turned into deserts. Coastal cities were submerged by rising sea levels, and populations were forced to migrate en masse to inland areas. 
humans struggled to adapt to a world that was changing too rapidly for them. The third prophecy was the most terrifying of all. It was not far from our reality. I saw a billboard indicating the year 2080. I saw a night sky lit up by unnatural lights, a sign of a global war unprecedented in scale. Nations were fighting with weapons I could not even comprehend, and the planet itself seemed to cry out in pain. The screams of millions of people filled the air as the world edged closer to the brink of total destruction. The visions dissolved, leaving me trembling and shocked. God looked at me with compassion and spoke again. These prophecies are warnings. Humanity has the power to change its destiny. Return to your world with this awareness and share what you have seen. I felt myself being pulled back through the tunnel of light, leaving behind the divine clearing and the infinite peace. I returned to my body with a jolt, reopening my eyes among the twisted wreckage of my car. The sounds of the real world, sirens and frantic voices, overwhelmed me. I knew that nothing would ever be the same. The return to reality was abrupt and painful. I felt every single pain in my body, but most of all, the weight of the visions I had just received was overwhelming. The paramedics were around me, talking to each other urgently as they carefully lifted me from the wreckage of the car. I heard their voices muffled, as if coming from a great distance. I wanted to speak, to tell them what I had seen, but I couldn't find the words. Every attempt to open my mouth resulted in a muffled groan. They rushed me to the hospital, and there began the long journey of physical healing, but my mind was still elsewhere, trapped between the visions I had received and the reality that surrounded me. The days passed slowly while I was hospitalized. My family and friends came to visit me, bringing flowers and words of comfort, but every time I closed my eyes, I returned to that golden clearing, the terrible prophecies, and the compassionate face of God. I knew I had to find a way to share what I had seen, but how could I do it without seeming crazy? It was during one of my physiotherapy sessions that I met Dr. Ricci, a psychologist specialized in trauma. He was introduced as part of my recovery process to help me process the trauma of the accident. He was a kind man with penetrating eyes and infinite patience. I started talking to him, first about superficial things, then gradually about my deepest fears. One day during one of our sessions, I felt it was the right time. I told Dr. Ricci everything, from the accident to the visions I had while unconscious. He listened silently without interrupting and when I finished, he looked at me with an indecipherable expression. What you experienced is extraordinary, he said finally. I can't scientifically explain what you saw, but I can tell you that you are not alone. Many people who have had near-death experiences report similar visions. The important thing is to understand how these visions can influence your life from now on. His words gave me a strange sense of comfort. I wasn't crazy. I wasn't alone. I decided to dedicate myself to understanding and sharing what I had seen. I began to write a detailed diary of my visions, trying to capture every single detail, every emotion. Once out of the hospital, my life took a completely new direction. I didn't return to work immediately, feeling that there was something more important I had to do. I joined support groups for people who had had similar experiences to mine and found comfort and inspiration in their stories. Many of them had seen similar things, a world in ruins, catastrophic climate changes, devastating wars. Our experiences seemed like pieces of a larger puzzle. One day while walking in a park near my home, I met an elderly woman sitting on a bench. She had a tranquil air and a serene smile. <laughs> For some reason, I felt drawn to her. I sat next to her and we started talking. 
I found out her name was Maria and that she had had an NDE many years before. Her story was different from mine, but the main themes were the same. Pain, loss, rebirth. Maria told me about a group of scholars and researchers who were trying to understand the meaning of NDEs on a global level. Hi, she gave me their contact information and encouraged me to share my experience with them. I decided to follow her advice and contacted the group. They were very interested in my story and invited me to participate in one of their conferences. The conference was held in a nearby city. It was an event that brought together people from all over the world, scientists, researchers, and especially those who had experienced NDEs. The room was full of curious and passionate faces. I told my story with a mix of fear and determination, describing in detail the three prophecies I had received. The audience's reaction was surprising, applause, tears, and many questions. After my speech, several people approached me. Some were simply curious, others were researchers who wanted to know more. Among them was a young woman, Elena, who told me she had had a similar experience. We decided to collaborate and collect as many testimonies as possible, hoping to find a common thread that could make sense of our visions. As the project took shape, the visions of the prophecies did not leave me. I felt the weight of responsibility, the need to warn humanity of the dangers that awaited us. But I also knew I had to be cautious. People were skeptical, and it would not be easy to convince them of the truth of my words. I started giving lectures, wrote articles, and appeared on television programs. My story began to spread and gather attention. Some called me a visionary. Others considered me crazy. But it didn't matter. I knew I had to keep speaking, sharing, fighting for a better future. One night, while reflecting on everything that had happened, I received an unexpected visit. It was my father again. It wasn't a dream. I could feel it. His presence was real, tangible. He smiled at me sweetly and said, You're doing the right thing, my child. Don't give up. The world needs to listen. His words gave me new strength. I knew the road would be long and difficult, but I wasn't alone. I had my father, I had Elena, and I had all the people who had had similar experiences. Together we could make a difference. The future of humanity was still uncertain, but I hoped that, with awareness and action, we could avoid the catastrophes I had seen. My mission had just begun. My commitment to spreading awareness of the visions I had received became my life's purpose. As my story continued to spread, I received invitations to participate in international conferences and to speak with spiritual and political leaders. Each occasion was an opportunity to share the message of the three prophecies and encourage humanity to change its course. During one of these conferences held in a major European city, I met Dr. Alexander Grant, a world-renowned scientist specializing in climate change and sustainability. He was a man of science, but also open to possibilities that science could not yet explain. After my speech, he approached me with a thoughtful expression. You know, he said, your visions, especially those regarding climate change, seem to align with current scientific predictions, but the accuracy of your details is unsettling. We began a collaboration. Dr. Grant and I organized a series of meetings with experts in various fields. Climatology, sociology, peace, and conflict studies. The goal was to examine the prophecies in light of existing scientific and social knowledge, trying to understand how the catastrophes I had seen could be avoided. The first prophecy, the one about nature reclaiming abandoned cities seemed already underway in some parts of the world. Some cities, especially in conflict zones or hit by natural disasters, had been left abandoned 
and nature was slowly reclaiming its space. Our studies showed that without drastic changes in resource management and urban planning, this scenario would become increasingly common. The second prophecy, climate change, was perhaps the most immediate and tangible. Evidence of global warming was everywhere. Melting glaciers, extreme weather events, mass extinctions. Our team worked on mitigation and adaptation strategies, promoting sustainable policies and encouraging international cooperation. But we knew that time was against us. The third prophecy, global war, was the most difficult to address. International tensions were rising and the risk of armed conflicts was ever present. We collaborated with peace and diplomacy organizations, trying to build bridges between nations and promote dialogue. It was slow and arduous work, but every small success gave us hope. As our work progressed, my connection with my father and the visions I had received continued to guide me. I often dreamed of him, and in my dreams he encouraged me to persevere. I felt there was still much to do, but I also knew I was not alone. People who had had similar experiences to mine had become an incredible support network. We shared our stories, supported each other, and worked together for a better future. One day during a meeting with Elena and Dr. Grant, we received shocking news. A new conflict had erupted in an already unstable region, threatening to involve other nations. The images of the global war I had seen in my visions came back to me, and fear gripped my heart. My life had changed radically since the accident. I had found a greater purpose, a mission that gave meaning to each day. The visions I had received had become a guide, a source of inspiration and strength. And I knew that, regardless of what the future held, I would continue to fight for a better world. The road was still long, but the destiny of humanity was no longer written in the stars. It was in our hands, and together we could change it. Thank you for listening to Jessica's story until the end. If you've made it this far, comment on this video with an amen, or let me know what you think of this experience in the comments. We'll see you in the next video. So, God bless you.